By 2030, it's predicted that there'll be a global labour shortage of more than 85 million skilled workers. So how do businesses prepare for the looming threat? Is new tech really the key? And is this a crisis which will blow over or blow up? Our next guest is Alan Guarino, Vice Chairman of Corn Ferry, who believes many companies already have everything they need to future-proof their business, their people. Let's meet him. I'm Angela Corp. Welcome to The Business Debate. Alan, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thanks, Angela. A lot of friends here at the London Stock Exchange. Uh, now, a quick internet search brings up a raft of articles on this looming skill shortage. Are businesses underestimating the impact it will have, perhaps seeing it as a fleeting part of a cycle? They're definitely underestimating it. But in fairness, you know, there's always this feeling of pain and skill shortage when you're dealing with an economic expansion, and we're certainly in a, in a robust economic times. But this one is different. It's not the result of the economic expansion. It's the result of the fact that we're not creating enough skilled workers to meet the demands of the future. And you're going to the European Parliament to talk to them about your research. What are you going to be telling them? Angela, yeah, I'll be going to Brussels. Europe, by 2030, is going to be short 14.3 million professional level workers. And that's going to represent about 1.9 trillion in unrealized GDP. I think that's something they're going to be interested in. That's what we'll be talking about and potentially suggesting ways that they can address it. How would you suggest they address it? Well, there's all kinds of things. In terms of government and geopolitical, they have to think about everything from immigration strategy to higher education reform. And certainly on the corporate side, they need to think about where they're going to spend their development dollars doing the workforce planning necessary to get ready for this shortage and win. So that's the European position. What's the global position here? Which are the sectors who are most affected around the world? Sure. We looked at three sectors globally. We looked at financial services. We looked at um, TMT, which is technology, media, and telecommunications. And we also looked at manufacturing. So financial services and business services, shortfall is going to be about 10.7 million people. And that will basically result in about $1.3 trillion in unrealized GDP. In manufacturing, it's 7.9 million people, and that'll be about $600 billion in GDP. And then in TMT, it's 4.3 million people and about 450 billion in unrealized GDP. So the shortage of people is going to hold back GDP growth, which obviously has other ramifications when you think about sovereign debt and other issues. As I said in the introduction, we're talking about a labor shortage of 85 million skilled workers over the next 12 years. But you're not talking about a lack of people, it's actually a lack of skills within the existing workforce. Absolutely. So we conducted a study of 20 representative countries, developed countries around the world, and based on their forecasted GDP growth, historically using a regression analysis, we can determine what their GDP ought to be. The fact of the matter is that it will be about $8.5 trillion smaller than it should be because they won't have the skills to meet that requirement. So those 85 million jobs will hold back that group of countries. And this has never happened before as a result of a skill shortage. So if businesses aren't paying attention and aren't prepared to fix this, what happens to them? How will this affect their bottom line? Well, GDP is representative basically of how businesses grow. If you don't have enough people, guess what? You can't grow. Another of your reports, the trillion dollar difference, shows around two thirds of CEOs still believe that tech is going to be the key to their biggest competitive advantage. And it's going to create bigger value in the future than people. Are you saying they're wrong? This actually amazes me. I talk to CEOs every day. They tell me their biggest pain point is they don't have enough of the right people to do what they need. Yet when we do a survey, it comes out that they're weighing technology as a much more important contributor than people. So quite frankly, they are wrong if that is indeed where they're focused. People are the answer. I always say if you invest in technology, it's critical or you'll die. But if you invest in technology, it won't mean you will win. You have to invest in people. That's where you're going to win. That's where the competitive advantage is going to come from in this next generation of business. Increasing skills amongst the workforce means those skilled workers now want a bigger pay packet. What is the salary surge and what does it mean for businesses? Sure. As you said, we call it the salary surge. It's, it's basic economics. It's, it's Adam Smith at work, supply and demand. If you have a, a talent shortage, then it's going to drive up price. Price is actually wages. So indeed, we are going to see a salary surge. Wages will uh, increase because those skills will be in higher demand and they'll command a higher price. 
quite frankly, investing and developing in people now in front of this shortage is going to help control the salary surge a bit because obviously if you're minting more talent, then the price won't rise as rapidly. How do you help companies get the most out of their workforce? Sure. Yeah. So at Corn Ferry, we're really expert at optimizing talent for a company. So everything along what we call the talent supply chain is what we do. Sometimes that means recruiting a new executive into a role or a new middle manager into a role or an entire team or outsourcing their entire recruiting activity. Um, and, and very often it means working with uh, the executive team around how to develop talent at all levels so that the company can actually execute its business strategy. How quickly do businesses need to act? We're talking about a looming crisis. Is it too late and what should they be doing? It's not too late, but it's happening now and it's getting close to being too late. The fact of the matter is if they don't invest in a talent solution, some type of workforce plan that is going to ensure that they are not going to be one of those companies that is short by upwards of 10% of the required professionals they need to execute their strategy, they're going to have a big problem. And what would be your key piece of advice to any of those businesses still on the fence about whether to do this, whether to invest in their workforce? Angela, they need to walk the talk. They are constantly saying that talent is their most important resource. But historically, they, they really do underinvest in the development of that talent. They need to fund the human resources function, they need to commit to it, and they need to make their talent a key priority in terms of the way they actually operate their business. Alan, thanks very much for joining us today. Happy to be here. And join us next time on The Business Debate when we'll be discussing cybersecurity and the future of mobility. Until then, goodbye.